Hi, thank you so much for joining me in this video. I am back with sketchbook tour number four. I just want to say that the only reason why this sketchbook tour has come so quickly is because I challenged myself to finish it in one week, which I do have a video of. The theme of the sketchbook is Turkey slash Turkish culture. Um, but without further ado, let's get started on this tour. For the cover, I just sketched it out on my laptop because it has the symmetry tool, which makes designing these like um, Middle Eastern rug designs, like putting them on paper easier. I printed it out, glued it here and laminated it. Uh, here I just did a cutout to kind of show the second page here. And I do want to say I did put more effort into each page than I normally would have because the sketchbook is going to be part of the library um, public library collection. So this is not how my regular sketchbooks would be. So here I just uh, painted the Maiden's Tower. I was first going to go with watercolors because watercolors is just my comfort medium. It's where my comfort zone is. Uh, but quickly I realized that the page was too thin to handle that so I went over it with acrylics and colored pencils. Here I drew the um, blue mosque. I used gold paints to add some interest as well. And here I replicated the like a very popular Turkish like marbling medium. Uh, like the effect that you would get with that medium. Uh, and it's called Ebru Sanatı. I obviously do not have the medium, so I tried to replicate that with acrylics. I do want to buy like the medium, and I did do a quick Google search, but the cheapest I could find was like $100, and that is just currently a little out of my budget. <laughs> but anyways, I was kind of <laughs> quickly getting tired, so instead of just sketching, I just took a ballpoint pen and just drew a whole bunch of artifacts that reminded me of Turkey. So these are, these would be like more ceramic stuff. Uh, these types of patterns on ceramics tend to be very popular. Um, and then an oil lamp, which we had in Turkey. I'm not sure what the English name of this like landmark would be, but in Turkish it's called the Galata Kulesi. And I used gouache, so in the sketchbook I did try to push myself in terms of the subject matter and the mediums, especially since I couldn't go to watercolors. And then here I once again just drew out a pattern on my laptop and I transferred it over here. It's just every household, well I'm not sure about modern households, but a lot of the households used to have these traditional um rug designs which I know you can see quite frequently in like that Middle Eastern area and another Ebru art style um, this is of my favorite flower carnations so you know I had to find a way to include it somehow and then Turkish tea and Turkish coffee uh, I love to ink first of all so I just wanted to do a spread full of just inking and shading um, and regarding Turkish tea and coffee well the coffee is too bitter. Any type of coffee is too bitter for me. I don't drink coffee, but the tea, be prepared if you're ever going to visit a Turkish person's house to be served Turkish tea. Like it's it's a huge part of the lifestyle. It's a huge part of the culture. Um, yeah, Turkish people drink lots of tea usually. And here um, I painted a really famous landmark called Pamukkale. Word for word translation is cotton cotton castle. There we go. And it looks very like it looks very icy but watery at the same time. So it's it looks very beautiful and it looks like something that does not belong on earth. So it's it was really hard to capture that. Um yeah, it's it's a very beautiful place and it has thermal waters. I believe the thermal waters also have healing properties, but it's a very famous touristic attraction. And here I painted um, like a street, a little place in Izmir, which like, you know, these types of streets you probably see a lot in uh, Europe. So yeah. 
I think that's one of the most interesting things about Turkey, where it's um, where Turkey, in terms of its location, takes place in like two continents, both Europe and Asia. So you do see a mix of mix of everything. <laughs> well, not everything, but I think the culture is so rich because of its like geological location as well. And here I tried to represent uh, certain Turkish eras in history and I tried to do that through Turkish shows that have Turkish historical shows pretty much. And this is the oldest one in terms of the era that it takes place in. And this is the Gökturk era. So I think it's the 6th to 8th century or the 9th century, something like that. And this is the same um, kilim design, just colored in this time. And here, this is um, something like a souvenir, like um, a craft thing. I'm not sure what these are, but uh, I bought this when I went to Turkey in 2018. And I had one of each design except this one where I had two. So I was kind of willing to put this in. The other ones, not so much, because they look so pretty. Here we have Cappadocia. These uh, rock formations are very famous, are very popular. Um, they are called Piribacaları. There we go. The name escaped me for a second. They're called Piribacaları. And I know they have like a formal, proper English name, but I want to translate it word for word. And that is fairy chimneys. And when I was younger, I remember thinking that these rocks were called fairy chimneys because little fairies lived in them. Here, uh, this is another era that I tried to represent, which is the Selçuk era. This is from one show and this is from another show. So I think this is the time where the Selçuk empire was just getting established. Um, and this is the third ruler. I think that's when the show takes place. Like Melik Shah is the ruler in this show. Oh, I also want to say that because these are historical shows, I'm not 100% sure about the accuracy of the outfits. But regardless, they are very pretty. And I just love the detailing. And, you know, I'm sure at that time they probably wore very pretty outfits and clothing given the time probably <laughs> again i just painted the uh, blue mosque i love the blue mosque it's also another one of those like places and subjects that i feel comfortable drawing whenever i run out of ideas this is the ottoman tura I don't know how i would say it in english but it's pretty much the stamp or like this seal or a signature of the Ottoman uh, sultans. And yeah, just when you look at it, you can immediately tell, well, a lot of people who are familiar with this stamp would be able to tell that it's the Ottoman era, pretty much. And this is a very popular calligraphic style. Uh, in Turkish, it's called Hat Sanatı. So I thought I could just write my art name, uh, my artist name in this style. Um, yeah, I, I really like this style of calligraphy, but they do have special pens, which I didn't. So I just kind of sketched it out with a pencil and then colored in the lines with a regular uh, ink pen. This is another era, which is actually the uh, show that inspired me to like try to represent other historical eras and look at different historical shows and their outfits and try to draw them. And this is the Ottoman era, at least the start of it. Uh, it's from the show Kurulush Osman. And again, it's just the outfits, the detailing. It's so stunning. And this is just, you know, a bench looking at the Istanbul scenery. And you can actually see the Maiden's Tower here. This is the Hagia Sophia Mosque. Some people call it a museum. Some people call it a mosque. But it is a landmark with a huge historical and religious significance. 
so I obviously had to include it and I actually liked the way it turned out. This was one of the pieces where I really had to trust the process. This was the spread where I was kind of running out of ideas because sticking to a theme uh, and trying to finish a sketchbook in one week can be quite challenging, but I thought that I could like uh, draw another Turkish artifact or something that reminded me of Turkey. And these designs that you see, like these flowers, are very popular in ceramics. So I really, really wanted to include it. I'm not sure what these flowers are called, but I thought it also kind of went well with this page, which is another Ebru art. This is another era, which is the last era that I represented. It's uh, towards the end of the Ottoman Empire. Um, so the 1900s, I want to say, or the late 1800s, maybe. Um, but it's uh, from the show called Payitaht Abdul Hamid. And I really like this outfit. This one was my favorite. I found that this uh, character kind of had a lot of different outfits. Some of them had more detailing. Some of them had, um, rather than detailing, had more like a cool sewn pattern but I still tried to add like detailing to certain places as I saw fits because they look really pretty. This is the Sumela Monastery. Um, I believe right now it's a museum or at least like a place where you can relive history. This building is located on like a steep hill, a steep cliff and it's among all this like rocks and greenery and just having a building in a place like this it was so intriguing to me and I had to had to uh, paint it just to show just how rich Turkish history truly is and how there are just so many places in Turkey that we can visit and relive history whether it be the 17th century the 700s 800s whatever it may be there are so many places to visit and see and yeah it's just Turkish history really it goes way back. Here is another page filled with Turkish artifacts or artifacts that remind me of Turkey. Again an oil lamp. Um, when I was younger we used to have oil lamps in like our bookshelves or at least on display from my parents' childhoods. So, I don't know, I feel like I have a soft spot for oil lamps. When I see them, it just reminds me immediately of Turkey. This is called a cezve, where Turkish uh, coffee is made. And these, it, like, these utensils is where uh, people make Turkish tea. And we're on the last page. Again, I painted the Maiden's Tower. If you've seen my last one or two sketchbook tours, I've been doing something where I try to finish the sketchbook the way I started. And it kind of helps me see whether if I've improved or if there is like stylistic progression or, you know, trying a different medium. It just, it's nice. Um, and I can definitely say that I like the color here more. And I can see that I was able to simplify what I saw and still be able to capture the essence of the picture. So yes, that concludes the sketchbook tour. It's a very short one. It's just, you know, a 40 page sketchbook. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed kind of, you know, going through some Turkish history uh, and going through certain things that reminded me of my home country. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Please take care.